Okay, we are going ahead and get started. Uh, thank you everyone for joining again and welcome to the UIC School of Public Health Global Health Speaker Series. My name is Keith Partica and I am the Academic Advisor for the Global Health Program at the School of Public Health. This is our monthly speaker series where we bring in an expert uh, across the world to discuss a uh, global public health topic. And we are really delighted for our speaker this month. Our speaker this month is Dr. Netsanet Balet, who is a public health specialist in the Ethiopian Ministry of Health. Uh, Dr. Balet will be speaking about maternal and child health in Ethiopia. And Dr. Balet is a seasoned public health specialist with over 11 years of professional experience within the Ethiopian healthcare system, earning her PhD at Jimma University in Jimma, Ethiopia. Her expertise encompasses both administrative and research roles, and she has a wealth of national and international experience. Dr. Ballet is particularly dedicated to maternal and newborn health initiatives and has been actively involved in these areas throughout her career. Dr. Ballet also graciously hosted a School of Public Health student at the Ethiopia, Ethiopian Ministry of Health this past summer for their applied practice experience. We thank Dr. Ballet for her mentorship and support of our students, and we are really excited to share her work with the School of Public Health community. Before I hand things over to Dr. Ballet, just a few housekeeping items. We will have time at the end for questions and answers. So if you have a question for Dr. Ballet, please feel free to answer and enter it in the chat and we will get to it at the end. And without any further ado, I will hand this off to Dr. Ballet for her presentation. Dr. Ballet, go ahead and feel free to start sharing your screen. So is it visible? Yes, you are visible and good to go. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Kate, for the nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Good uh, good afternoon from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Uh, today, uh, I'm pleased uh, to be with you uh, today speaking about the maternal and child health uh, in my country, Ethiopia. And uh, I would uh, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, to thank uh, Kate and uh, Alison for inviting me to speak uh, about these uh, maternal and child health issues in Ethiopia. So my presentation is uh, mainly focusing on uh, the status of maternal and child health in Ethiopia uh, and the work that uh, has been done and uh, the challenges we have. While, while delivering this maternal and child health, and again, uh, the next actions or the future actions uh, that are uh, that need to be focused uh, just to improve to improve this maternal and child health. So, uh, saying this, uh, this is my uh, outline of talk. Uh, I will have a brief introduction about Ethiopia, the maternal and child health, and, uh, and, and again, the maternal and child health in Ethiopia, uh, the program focus areas, uh, and the stats of the indicators, uh, especially for this maternal and child health. Uh, and as I say, the challenges we have uh, and the context-specific barriers that are uh, hindering uh, utilization of services for mothers and children. And again, the future, the way forward. And finally, I will end up uh, by concluding uh, my presentation. So saying this, uh, just to say something about, uh, about uh, Ethiopia, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know where Ethiopia is located, it's uh, located in the Eastern part of Africa, uh, bordered with Eritrea from the North, uh, Djibouti from East, uh, and South Sudan from West and uh, Kenya from South. And uh, we didn't do actually recently a census, but 
it's estimated that uh, the around 120 million people are living in Ethiopia with uh, 59 to 49 uh, female to male uh, population ratio. Uh, and uh, uh, it's estimated again that 33% of uh, this 120 million population is uh, estimated to be adolescent between the age of 10 and uh, 19. And we have also uh, 14 one for administrative regions. Uh, and again, uh, related to uh, today's topic, uh, we expect uh, like 3.5 million pregnancies in a year. Uh, so that we are expected uh, to provide this maternal and child health services to this uh, 3.5 million uh, pregnancies every year. Uh, so saying this, uh, coming to the maternal and child health, uh, I know all of you know what maternal is, uh, health is, but uh, it's better to define it uh, before going to the details. So uh, maternal health, as you know, is uh, it's the health of the mother during pregnancy delivery in the postnatal period. This is a definition from the World Health Organization, WHO. Uh, and most of the time, if, uh, if you consider like programmers of this maternal and child health, they focus on these three important areas, the pregnancy, the labor and delivery in the postnatal period. And these three interventions are again proved to be cost effective and as well as high impact interventions uh, to save the lives of the, the child and the newborn and the mother. And um, saying this in the government of Ethiopia, as you know, this maternal and child health, uh, it is uh, uh, it's uh, it is a focus uh, for the whole world, uh, and we have global commitments, as you know. And uh, as part of this, the government of Ethiopia is also working to improve the this the health of mothers and new uh, children. And this maternal and child health is uh, uh, became the focus of the government for the last two three decades. And all the policy documents were supportive regarding this uh, ANC. Uh, and uh, in implementing this maternal and child health, uh, we have like uh, a three tier system in the health system. That means the first uh, on the top is uh, the specialized care, uh, like uh, referral hospitals and specialized hospitals. In the middle, we have uh, general hospitals. And in the bottom, we have primary health care units. Uh, and these primary health care units uh, are composed of uh, the primary hospital, the health center, and the health post. Uh, usually, this health center and uh, primary hospital is uh, uh, specially common in low and middle income countries. But in our case, we have the health posts, which are uh, built by the government, uh, and uh, they are built near to the community to serve like 5,000 population. And this, uh, these health posts, they are staffed with uh, uh, health extension workers where, uh, where a one-year training was, will be provided by the government. And they are recruited from the, from the community and uh, they are again deployed to the same community. And they know uh, the culture and the, the, the barriers and the like and uh, they are supporting the, the government to provide this community level health interventions. And most of, uh, they have like 19 packages uh, to deliver, but most of the packages were uh, related to this maternal and child health. Uh, and saying this, uh, what, has me, uh, what has been done? Uh, I would like to explain uh, what, uh, what has been done by the government of Ethiopia. Uh, uh, for the whole health sector, not only for maternal and child health. And for this, I will follow like uh, the, health, the, the World Health Organization health system building blocks, the six components. So the whole aim is to provide quality and equitable health service uh, wherever the, the woman lives. And uh, the first one is the health workforce. Uh, so what has been done uh, for regarding with this health workforce is that uh, there, the focus was on, on pre-service education uh, before graduating and, uh, and deployed to health facilities. Uh, uh, this is one focus area. The other is in-service trainings, uh, specifically de 
to improve the skill and knowledge of professionals uh, by uh, main by deploying mentors, senior uh, healthcare providers. Uh, and the other one is the, uh, the, to improve the professional mix uh, so that the women uh, who need a specialist care uh, will, will be uh, attended by specialists. And the other very important thing is uh, the government of Ethiopia is working uh, on task shifting and task sharing. And uh, I can give example, for example, uh, ultrasound, is, ultrasound scanning uh, previously used to be uh, provided by radiologists only, but uh, after this uh, sh task shifting exercise, the midwives are trained to do this ultrasound scanning, and they are trained to do this obstetric limited ultrasound. And uh, also these community health workers, uh, the health extension workers are also providing selected family planning methods to the community. Uh, and th these are some of the examples regarding the, the service delivery, as uh, I try to explain, this maternal and child health is uh, one of the focus area of the government. So there are supporting do policy documents. There is a, uh, a, a good policy environment so that uh, we can mobilize resources and implement uh, the recommended interventions. Uh, and regarding the health uh, information system, uh, actually uh, a lot has been done, but there are some uh, there are challenges in this health information system because uh, most of the works uh, were done to digitalize the system, uh, but we have like infrastructure related problems here. On the medical products and supplies. Uh, again, uh, this maternal and child health uh, is being provided free of charge. And uh, the, the, ch the, uh, the hospital health centers who are providing, especially the public hospitals and health, health centers, who are providing uh, free of charge service, especially in, in selected maternal and child health services, uh, are finally reimbursed by the government. Uh, uh, and also there are... Uh, uh, movements to digitize uh, the distribution of uh, medical supplies and uh, uh, and the like. Uh, and uh, on financing, again, we, uh, there is experiences like the uh, the allocation for health, the budget allocation from the government is increasing from to from time to time. And regarding leadership and uh, governance, again, uh, there are efforts uh, to train uh, to capacitate. Uh, health managers or at all uh, at all level, starting from the Minister of Health at the top to uh, the district level health managers, local managers. Uh, there are uh, cascade trainings to improve uh, their skills and, and knowledge. So these are uh, a summary of what has been done in the health sector as a whole. So coming to the the focus areas of the program, uh, this maternal and child health again. Um, the main aim is to provide uh, equitable and quality maternal and child health service. For, so for this, uh, for example, some of the focus areas for maternal health, uh, one is like uh, antenatal care. So antenatal care is uh, uh, it's considered as an entry point for, for the rest of uh, maternal health uh, uh, contact points, the, the, ch the child birth and the postnatal period. So uh, uh, one of the quality measures in, in this antenatal care period is ultrasound scanning. So uh, it was not mandatory to have ultrasound uh, before, but uh, after the, as per the WHO recommendation, after this eight contact uh, was started to be implemented, this ultrasound uh, scanning uh, was mandatory so that the, the mothers should have at least ultrasound before 24 weeks of gestation. Uh, so uh, this was one of the focus area. The other one is uh, the maternity waiting homes. So these maternity waiting homes are home-like environments uh, uh, which are built inside health facilities or nearby the health facilities. So the aim is, uh, as most of you know, there are three delays. Uh, uh, like the first delay, the second delay, in the delay model, we have three delays. The first delay is the decision to seek care, as you know. So uh, the mother could not decide uh, immediately 
uh, to visit to health facilities for any of the cases related to this pregnancy and childbirth. Uh, and this is the first delay. And the second delay is uh, the delay to reach to the health facility. Uh, and this is most of the time transportation issues. Uh, and the third delay is uh, the mother came uh, deciding to seek care. Uh, she uh, got transport to reach to the health facilities. But in the third delay, the health care providers didn't, uh, didn't decide timely to provide the care. So these maternity waiting homes, they are planned uh, to reduce delay to uh, uh, so that the mothers could have uh, any necessary care uh, on time. So these are built, these maternity waiting homes, as I said before, are built inside the health facilities or nearby so that uh, mothers, when they get term, uh, they uh, came and stay in these maternity waiting homes. And when the labor starts, uh, without delays, they can uh, get the service uh, with skilled professionals inside uh, health, inside health facilities. So this this was one of uh, this is actually one of the the focus area. The other one is 20, 20 hours care and stay after delivery. So here, uh, uh, when we see like the cause of this uh, for Ethiopia, uh, postpartum hemorrhage is. Uh, with the first on the top and uh, if we see the the share or the uh, the share uh, that like 50 percent of the mothers are dying uh, because of postpartum hemorrhage so this this postpartum hemorrhage should be like we have two hours golden hour to respond but uh, we have like challenging transport and most of the deliveries are conducted at home uh, so mothers are dying because of this pph <clears throat> sorry so this uh the implementation of this <clears throat> no, i'm sorry the implementation of this uh, 24 hours care in the states uh to uh, to respond to this postpartum hemorrhage timely and if the mothers stay like 24 hours we have time to provide care if if complications happen uh after delivery so this is one of uh, the other focus area is uh providing comprehensive emergency obstetric and newborn care. And this is uh, again provided at health center level by uh, a trained um, health officers or clinical officers. Uh, and these professionals are uh, mostly doing emergency caesarean section. Uh, and uh, again, they are uh, uh, providing the care uh, near to the community at health center level. The other one is the maternal uh, and perinatal disease and surveillance uh, and response system. This is a system built, uh, uh, so starting from 2013, um, it was implemented in Ethiopia. Uh, so the whole aim is uh, to prevent similarities um, in, in the future, to prevent similarities. So this system uh, is, uh, there is uh, notification there uh, if the mother died, uh, there should be notification uh, and uh, the cause of death should be reviewed uh, with a different mix of healthcare providers. Uh, and uh, then a response should be given uh, for the identified cause of death. So the response could be from the health facility uh, or from the Minister of Health or other subnational structures. Uh, so this is... Uh, uh, MPDSR and the same is true for <clears throat> perinatal disease and surveillance and response. The other one is uh, a fistula, obstetric fistula and vaginal prolapse. Uh, this one, I think, uh, obstetric fistula, uh, it's already a history in most of the developed countries, but uh, our mothers are uh, still current, uh, suffering from this obstetric fistula. And uh, the main focus here is uh, just to identify mothers uh, who have this uh, uh, uterovaginal prolapse and fistula and refer them to the centers where the treatment is given uh, and treat uh, these mothers uh, with surgical procedures, of course, and then reintegrate to the community uh, just to have uh, to continue living their no normal life. So the, the main aim of the program is, here is like identifying, treating um, 
and reintegrating mothers to their community. The other one, capacity building, is a cross-cutting uh, intervention. And coming to the focus areas for child health program, we have broadly, we have uh, two areas. The first is facility level intervention. The second is community level intervention. So on facility level interventions, we have uh, neonatal intensive care units. So the, the children who need this uh, care will be uh, treated in, uh, in this NICUs. And we have uh, like providing this service in three levels. The first one is level one in primary hospitals, level two in general hospitals, and level three in, uh, in tertiary or specialized hospitals. And we have, again, integrated management of newborn and childhood illness. Uh, and this is, again, uh, provided in health centers and primary hospitals. So uh, professionals working in these health centers and pr primary hospitals they are expected to to follow this IMNCI booklet and provide in the care and treat uh, the children with uh, any of the common uh, childhood illnesses. And the other community level interventions, uh, uh, one 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 in one in the, the the main focus area is the integrated community management of newborn and childhood illness, uh, and this is being done by health extension workers. And again, they are uh, providing curative care for common childhood illness in Ethiopia. And the other one, kangaroo mother care, like you, you know, this is for uh, preterm and uh, preterm babies. And uh, uh, those who born underweight. Uh, so um, we recommend like, uh, uh, the newborn uh, uh, born like below uh, 2000 uh, gram, the, they are recommended to stay in, in the facility, but they are in between 2000 and 1005 uh, to 1500 gram. And they can be like uh, this kangaroo mother care could be given by the mother or the father at home. And the other one uh, with the broader strategy of uh, uh, alive, survive, and thrive. Uh, the uh, the other one is uh, which is a recently uh, introduced initiative is early childhood development. So this early childhood development has four domains. The first one is language development. The second one is uh, physical development. And the third one is cognitive development. And the fourth one is uh, this social emotional development. So um, the Minister of Health is implementing this early childhood development in uh, in selected uh, health facilities, uh, so that after um, having lesson from these selected uh, health facilities, uh, it will be uh, scaled up to uh, the larger geographic areas uh, all over the country. So these are um, uh, so. Actually, the main uh, focus program focus areas for maternal and child health in Ethiopia. <clears throat> so, saying this, uh, uh, we have indicators, mm -hmm. like I said before, uh, to measure uh, whether the program is going uh, going well or not. Uh, we have key for key performance indicators. So, for uh, for maternal health, the first is antenatal care. So this antenatal care, um, uh, actually the figures uh, uh, I displayed here uh, are brought from the recently conducted Ethiopian Mini uh, Demographic and Health Survey in 2019. And uh, as you can see from the graph, uh, the trend is good. It's improving from time to time, uh, but still in 2019, uh, uh, we have uh, only 74% of mothers who came at least once for pregnancy care, for antenatal care. So uh, this is uh, a low coverage, as you see. Uh, and again, uh, for the fourth visit, um, the recommended fourth visit, uh, the 2019 EDHS shows that only 43% of mothers uh, are, are uh, able to achieve this uh, 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 fourth visit. So this is again uh, below 50%. Uh, so 
this is again a low coverage. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, recently, uh, the Minister of Health introduced the recommended interventions for ANC uh, based on the recommendation from World Health Organization. Uh, the eight contact model was introduced and uh, it was on implementation. Uh, and uh, saying this, uh, these are three most important areas of challenge in this antenatal care. The first one is early initiation of antenatal care. So for for the focused model, that means for the fourth visit, we expect the, the mothers to start the first ANC before 16 weeks of gestation. Uh, and uh, on this, uh, on the currently implemented eight contact model, uh, we expect the mothers to start the first ANC before 12 weeks of gestation. But um, the minimum, uh, the minimum, no, the average, uh, months that the mothers are coming for the first AMC was uh, like uh, five months, uh, which is already late uh, because most of the interventions, most of the uh, foundation is al already uh, passed uh, in the first trimester, in the first three, uh, three months. Uh, and that is one of the challenge. And again, uh, like I said before, um, the coverage is one of the issues. Uh, because uh, less than fifty, less than fifty percent of mothers are uh, uh, are able to achieve ANC four, so the rest are not coming uh, for health the facilities for continued or consecutive ANC visits. This is also another challenge. The other one is service dropout. Yeah, like you see uh, from the graph, uh, seventy-four percent of mothers they already came, they are already in contact with the health system but uh, they are not reaching to the fourth visit. So service dropout is again one of the challenge for, uh, for anti care. The other one is institutional delivery. Uh, again, uh, institutional delivery is also uh, increasing uh, when you see the trend. Uh, so in, in 2009, uh, in, in 2019, 48% of mothers are uh, uh, coming for childbirth care at health facilities. Uh, in Ethiopia, uh, we have, as you know, we have uh, institutional delivery and skilled uh, delivery, but in, in our context, we are recommending institutional delivery because we have um, uh, we don't have enough number of professionals so that we couldn't uh, send skilled health professionals to, uh, to attend this delivery at home. So we are recommending institutional delivery only. So that's why I'm... Uh, I keep saying institutional delivery. So uh, in 2019, like only 48% of mothers are um, delivered at health facilities. So that means uh, greater than half uh, mothers are delivering at home uh, and uh, they are not in safe hands if complication happens. Uh, and again, in this part, uh, coverage is one of the big issue. Uh, and mothers are saying like, uh, we don't have... Um, uh, healthcare, healthcare providers are uh, didn't have um, uh, flexibility. For example, during laboring, they are, they didn't allow us uh, to take like any birth position. And again, uh, most of the health facilities are uh, crowded, and uh, birth company again is not allowed in most of the health facilities. And mothers are complaining these two issues uh, while. They are asked why uh, they deliver at home. So um, these are uh, some of the challenges for institutional delivery. The other one, the last one is postnatal care. In postnatal care, as you know, is um, especially the first two days are critical uh, uh, to save the lives of the newborns and, uh, and the mother. Um, but uh, as you can see from the graph, only 34% of mothers are coming for, for, for this postnatal care in Ethiopia, uh, especially in the first two days. And the challenges, again, the coverage uh, uh, here is also a challenge. The other one, there are cultural, cultural related challenges, uh, the, especially in the postnatal period. Mothers stay indoor uh, up to like a month after, after delivery, let alone coming to health facilities for PNC. They didn't even leave their bedroom. Uh, after delivery. So this uh, uh, like cultural challenges are again challenging uh, the 
the postnatal care service in Ethiopia. So saying this, uh, 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 this is a graph showing the maternal mortality uh, rate in Ethiopia, uh, ratio in Ethiopia. Uh, so usually the, this maternal age child health uh, are uh, measured, the, the improvement, the quality is measured by the number of leaves saved, right? So uh, usually it's measured by the number of leaves saved, saved and this uh, maternal mortality ratio is uh, is reported in most of the maternal age child as documents. And uh, here I put, uh, it's not it's not actually uh, uh, actual data, but it's an estimate by the UN intelligence, including WHO, UNFP, UNICEF, and other UN agencies. It was an it is an estimate, uh, and this estimate showed that in 2020, uh, 260 seven mothers per 100,000 live births are dying due to this pregnancy and uh, childbirth related complications. And uh, as I said, this is an estimate, but the actual data is not that much recent. In 2016, uh, there was a demographic and health survey and it showed uh, like um, four, uh, 412 mothers are uh, dying uh, because of this maternal and child uh, maternal uh, pregnancy and child uh, uh, child related complications. So uh, uh, this one is the recent one. Uh, that's why uh, I bring it uh, for this presentation. But uh, the estimate, it was done in 2020. Uh, and after 2020, um, as a country, we have we were in a, in a, in a triple burden. Uh, there was COVID-19, um, like the rest of the, the world. Uh, and we have... Uh, conflict is here and there and we have like droughts and all of them they affect uh, the delivery of essential health services at health facilities so probably if uh, the data from this uh, the last three years is uh, included uh, the this number may go up uh, but for 2020 it was uh, in 2267 so uh, the target is um, in the SDG, uh, as you know, uh, every country should achieve like this number, 70 per 100,000 uh, live births in 2030 as part of the uh, SDG goal. So uh, we are far away from the target. Uh, actually, we have uh, six, seven years uh, uh, ahead, uh, but uh, it will be, I think, uh, uh, a hard uh, to achieve this goal, but uh, as you know, uh, for countries who couldn't achieve this 70, uh, 140 also uh, uh, indicated um, uh, as a target for 2030. The other one is uh, early childhood mortality. And again, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, the data from the de uh, demographic and health survey. Uh, the neonatal mortality rate was uh, 30 per per thousand the anti care was uh, it was uh, yeah, sorry the maternal mortality it was from 100000 live births but this neonatal mortality is was it was it is per uh, hundred it, it 30 uh, neonates per 1000 uh, all the child early childhood mortality indicators are per uh, per thousand and the infant mortality, uh, it's 43 per thousand. And the under five mortality, uh, it's like 55 per thousand. Uh, and uh, when we see the target for uh, 1430, yeah, the target was to reduce the neonatal mortality for, to uh, 12 per thousand and uh, the under five mortality to 25 per thousand. And again, a lot needs to be done to achieve this goal by 2030. So um, I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Uh, so the challenges, again, uh, I try to explain this based on the World Health Organization uh, uh, building blocks. The first one is the health workforce, as I said before. So uh, the challenge here is the health provider to population ratio is not um, as recommended by uh, by the World Health Organization. Uh, 
and uh, not only the health provider to population ratio, but the distribution of the health workforce is not uh, is not good because most of the healthcare providers are concentrated uh, in urban settings. Uh, and um, uh, in uh, Ethiopia, like 84 percent of uh, the population is living in in countryside in rural areas, uh, but most of the health workforce is concentrated in urban uh, areas. So this is one of the challenge. Again, of course, there are knowledge and skill gap related challenges, uh, not uh, for all health uh, healthcare providers, but for some. Um, and on on self on service delivery, uh, of course, we have infrastructure related challenges. Uh, uh, we have uh, literacy level is one of the challenge because um, like uh, when we are disseminating health informations, mm -hmm. uh, the behavior change, the social, the behavior change component is not achieved. So this is one of the challenges. The other one, the sector, uh, the sectoral involvement, sectors uh, other than the health sector. For example, if the health sector is building health centers or hospitals, uh, if the power is not there, um, and if the water is not there, uh, uh, in an interrupted fashion, if the if telecommunication is not there, it's uh, difficult to provide the service. So, um, uh, sectoral invol involvement is one of the challenge. The other one, ambulance and their utilization, is also uh, a challenge regarding uh, the health information. Uh, documentation is one of the biggest challenge in Ethiopia. Documentation is not a culture. Uh, a provider may do uh, um, many different works, but document that he may not uh, he may not document. Uh, so this is uh, the challenge. Digitalization of the, this health information system is, is also uh, if there are there are actually um, um, lessons experiences, but uh, it has to be uh, um, implemented in a wider scale. Uh, and the other one is. There is a data inconsistency from different reports, let's say from the surveys, from routine uh, health information systems and the like. There, uh, there is a data inconsistency. There is also a challenge in timely reporting the activities, and also uh, there are incomplete reports here and there. Uh, and this is the other challenge regarding the medical products and supplies. Uh, of course, there are shortage of medical equipment and supplies, uh, and um, uh, um, the, the, this medical equipment and supplies management is also one of the, the challenge. In some areas, uh, the, some of the communities, some of the drugs are expiring. In other areas, um, there are shortage of the same uh, commodities and, uh, and drugs. So managing, coordinating this distribution system is also the other challenge, the other one, the maintenance of these medical equipments. Um, and we have a limited number of biomedical prof professionals in Ethiopia, so that uh, these medical pro products are not uh, uh, maintained timely, uh, which are contributing for the interrupted uh, service delivery in health facilities. And the other one is uh, regarding financing. Um, even though there are uh, improvements in the allocation of budget uh, from the government side uh, and mobilizing the resources from donors and non governmental organizations, still financing is a challenge. Uh, we, we, didn't, uh, we couldn't reach to this uh, 1, 5%, 15% uh, of the total budget for health. Uh, and in some areas, uh, it's difficult to sustain the programs that are implemented by non-governmental organizations or other non-state non actors. Um, so on leadership and governance, uh, there is over-dependence on community structure, like I said before. Um, uh, the, uh, these uh, health extension programs are the lowest stru structure in the health system. Uh, so over-dependence of these community-level structures is one of the challenge and budget utilization. Uh, of the available budget and evidence-based decision-making. Mm -hmm. This evidence-based decision-making is actually, uh, it's a shared challenge because uh, the data is not coming timely, it's not it's, uh, it's incomplete, and it's inconsistent in some cases. 
So it's difficult to decide based on uh, uh, this data. So these are uh, challenges that can happen in any of the de developing countries, but we have also context-specific barriers for uh, for this maternal and child health. So, um, especially uh, for this reproductive health, uh, uh, there are challenges in, in related to the culture and norm of the the community. For example, uh, a woman uh, didn't have autonomy to decide for her reproductive health needs, and again, uh, she is not um, empowered to decide. Uh, to, for example, to seek care, to seek health care, and on, uh, uh, and she, again, she is not empowered to decide uh, for her uh, reproductive health needs. So this is a broader challenge we have uh, for all reproductive health programs, but um, specific to maternal health, for family planning, for example, uh, this family planning is related to religion, and mothers are saying, my religion didn't allow to take this um, family planning and we have to do uh, continuous demand creation activities to convince these mothers and group of mothers actually and um, the other one is early initiation of pregnancy uh, as uh, I tried to explain previously this anti healthcare is um, uh, it's an entry point for other maternal health care um, services so uh, but this uh, and uh, this uh, antenatal care, especially pregnancy in its early stage, is not widely discussed in, in Ethiopia. And uh, mothers are, uh, start discussing about their pregnancy after it's becoming visible, um, like uh, after four or five months uh, pregnant, after becoming four or five months pregnant. So um, if it's not widely discussed, uh, the mothers are uh, in difficulty to come to the health facility to get the services. So uh, uh, this this is not only affecting the ANC, but uh, the childbirth uh, care service and the postnatal care service as, as, uh, as well. And the institutional delivery, uh, like uh, I tried to show you, uh, more than half of the mothers are delivering at home. So they are preferring the traditional birth attendants. So the government of Ethiopia, um, some years ago, uh, tried to train these traditional birth attendants and used as a company uh, for mothers and to bring uh, these mothers to the health facilities um, so that they can care, they can receive a skilled care. The other one, the postnatal care, like I said before, the mothers they are not uh, leaving their bedroom, uh, let alone uh, coming to the health facility. So uh, innovative strategies like uh, uh, visiting these postnatal mothers uh, at their home is uh, one of the emerging initiative uh, for, for Ethiopia. The child health is uh, the challenge, the feeding practice, um, uh, when, to, uh, when to start uh, feeding, um, uh, feeding or giving breast milk, uh, when to uh, stop or uh, when to exclusively uh, up, up to when exclu exclusively breastfeeding uh, the, their child uh, is a challenge. Uh, when to introduce the complementary feeding, uh, how to feed the sick and uh, uh, normal children is also one of the challenge. Early care seeking for children is also the other big challenge we have in the child health program. So saying this. Uh, 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 I have like six, seven points uh, on the future actions. Uh, the first one is access to care. Uh, because uh, access, uh, we can have like health uh, facilities here and there, but they should be uh, disability friendly and they should um, uh, also include uh, mothers in uh, mothers who are not empowered to go to the health facility. So access should be ensured in that way uh, and also quality and equity of services. The other one is med sectoral coordination because this is one of the gray area, uh, but most of the maternal and child health services they are uh, dependent on the med sectoral response. And so this is one of the focus area. The other one is community level awareness creation. Uh, 
uh, still we have we have to reach a community with innovative uh, social behavioral change communication strategies uh, so that they are convinced and the health seeking uh, uh, will be improved as well. And the other one is again budget allocation from the government side and improving um, uh, improving the resource mobilization from non-state actors um, and also working on health workforce population ratio um, and the redistribution of the health workforce which is already condensed in uh, in urban settings and uh, improving medical equipment and supplies distribution use uh, and uh, improving um, uh, also the the amount of uh, these supplies and commodities procured every year is also one of uh, the focus area and the other one is the implementation of innovative strategies like we said uh, there are recommendations from the world health organization and other uh, Melt center studies, especially, but um, some of the challenges they couldn't be uh, they couldn't be solved by the uh, national international recommendations. They need context specific solutions, uh, like uh, I said, for postnatal care, for example, um, mothers are visited in their home uh, by the health extension workers or a midwife with equipments on hand, the blood pressure measurements, the thermometer, and the like. And again, recently we have also endorsed uh, self-care uh, guideline at the ministry. And the self-care guideline is also uh, aimed to achieve this universal health coverage and it's believed to um, uh, reduce this, this, the workload from the health system. So these are some of the areas uh, that need to be focused in the future to improve the, this matter rally child health. So in conclusion, um, I can say that uh, progress has, has, uh, has been made to improve the, this maternal and child health, but again, a lot needs to be done to achieve uh, both the national and international targets. Um, and um, uh, in this uh, process, we, we have to focus on cost-effective and high-impact interventions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and a special uh, focus uh, should be given for uh, averting uh, these high mortality drivers or causes of uh, diseases for both the mother and the child or the newborn uh, and capacity building at all levels of the health system, including the leadership, the local leaders, the health care providers, the community health workers is also uh, one of the points to add. And uh, finally, addressing uh, local challenges, context-specific challenges uh, that are hindering the mother to visit health facilities is also uh, one of the area to uh, to do interventions to improve this uh, maternal and child health. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. Um, Kate, uh, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Bullet, and again, thank you again for terrific presentation and for taking the time in your nighttime um, for uh, speaking with our community. So we have about 10 minutes left for questions and answers, and we did get uh, some questions while you were presenting. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to answer the chat. So Dr. Bullet, the first question is, is any work being done with traditional birth attendants to increase referrals for obstructed labor or other complications? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, for traditional birth attendants, uh, some years back, like I said before, uh, the government is providing training for these traditional birth attendants because uh, most of the mothers, they are uh, heavily depend on these traditional birth attendants and uh, uh, any complication, if any complication related to this pregnancy in mother and childbirth happens, they first contact these traditional birth attendants. So what the government did is uh, providing the uh, providing training for these traditional birth attendants, uh, so that they can uh, accompany the mothers to come to the health facility. And even they are these traditional birth attendants, they are allowed uh, to uh, accompany the mother even in the delivery room. 
so that uh, this was one of the intervention uh, that was done. Great. Uh, another question we had was, you mentioned that birth companions are not permitted in, during the delivery. Are, have, have there been any efforts to modify that um, policy in order to increase the number of institutional deliveries? And then um, uh, attached to that, what are the main barriers of having the birth companion um, be permitted during the delivery? So uh, these days, the policy documents are uh, they are supporting birth company, but uh, when in practical cases, uh, especially the the hospitals, uh, they are attending like more than a thousand delivery per month. So um, we we can have like uh, five or six uh, coaches for the mothers to deliver. So it's difficult uh, to maintain both the visual and auditory privacy for the mother. So um, based on this infrastructure, it's difficult to implement it, but the policy documents, they are supporting birth company, but especially in health centers where, where the, the delivery load is not that much, the mothers are allowed uh, to, uh, to come into the delivery room. Okay, interesting. Um, can you elaborate on the challenges in the conflict zones, particularly in the Tigray region? And to your knowledge, is the situation there improving? Uh, sorry, sorry. Can you uh, repeat the question, Kate? Yes, yes, of course. Um, can you elaborate on the challenges in the conflict zones, particularly, particularly in the Tigray region? And to your knowledge, is the situation there improving? So, uh, yes, the situation is uh, improving very well. Uh, and uh, we are working to restore uh, uh, the health system in Tigray region. Um, actually, the conflict is not uh, only in Tigray region, in the northern part of Ethiopia, and uh, some small-scale conflicts are also there in the in the western and uh, southern parts of Ethiopia. Uh, so uh, the conflict in the northern region, especially in, Tig in Tigray region, is improving, and uh, we are uh, working uh, uh, like to... Um, uh, to restore the health system as a whole, starting from the the region level, uh, the, the sub uh, sub regional levels like district health offices with the health system, uh, there are uh, like um, a team of experts sent from the Minister of Health to assess the status and respond accordingly. We are also mobilizing this for, um, this uh, 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 like budget or uh, funding to restore the health facilities to restore the medical equipment and the like. Thank you. Um, so while we wait for other questions from the audience, um, I do have a few of my own. Um, and so on the slide where you mentioned the early childhood mortality, um, the neonatal mortality rate looked like it was, um, it's been stagnant um, mm -hmm. compared to the infant and, and under five mortality rate. Um, can you can you talk about what some reasons why that rate may be you know stagnant and then just you know not decreasing compared to the other two? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, so the neonatal mortality is not uh, uh, is not only decreasing, but it's increasing. For example, if we see the figures from two thousand sixteen two thousand nine. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, most of, the, for example, if I say like 55% uh, of the per hundred, uh, per thousand uh, under five children are dying, like 54% is contributed by neonatal units, by the way, when we are talking about under mm -hmm. five. Uh, so um, uh, this is because uh, this neonatal mortality, it's not uh, uh, averted. On, uh, by only working on neonates because uh, it's related to the health of the mother. Uh, and as you know, um, the mothers are not coming for uh, for antital care, for pregnancy care. Uh, and again, preconception care is not, uh, is not 
implemented previously. Uh, these days, we are trying to implement preconception care, but the preconception care was not there in a coordinated manner. So uh, the healthcare providers, they don't have an opportunity to get the mother before conception to advise about this pregnancy and childbirth later things. Uh, and again, uh, for the pregnancy care, they came late. Uh, and this preterm birth and uh, uh, underweight birth is the main cause of uh, mortality for the for early childhood mortality as a whole and for neonatal mortality uh, specifically. So it's it's not uh, alleviated only by working on neonates, but it's linked to the maternal care and the others. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, thank you again. Um, and then the last question I had was, um, you mentioned kangaroo care. Um, and, you know, I was reading an article in another country in Africa, I'm not sure where it was, where the fathers were really embracing kangaroo care as a way to um, protect their child and to, you know, spend time with their child, you know, and, and also ease the um, is the burden off their wife. So in Ethiopia, have you seen fathers embracing kangaroo care and doing it themselves? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Kate. Uh, I forget to to add fathers in the kangaroo mother care, but we are, uh, we are actually practicing kangaroo father care as well. Uh, because uh, as I said before, uh, for, new, for newborns below, uh, 2000 gram we recommend to come to the health facilities but so, uh, those uh, between 2000 and 2500 they can go home but uh, the father or the mother can have uh, can uh, get there and provide uh, uh, warm and the like uh, because uh, this kangaroo mothers or father care could uh, could last for, uh, like a month for humans, for example, so uh, it, it it is not um, uh, provided by the mother only. So we are uh, again um, uh, advocating for fathers to to do this kangaroo father care as well. Yes, thank you, and that you know, just a great frugal innovation. You know, kangaroo care. It's just so simple um, that can be implemented around the world. So we are coming up on. I'm sorry. Um, so we are coming up on the hour. So we have time for one last question, if anyone has one. Um, and if not, Dr. Bellet, thank you again. This was a very, this was a terrific presentation, um, learning a lot about maternal and child health care in Ethiopia. Um, and as I again mentioned at the beginning, thank you so much um, for your partnership and support of our students. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, thank you so much, uh, Kate, for giving again for giving me this opportunity to speak about uh, maternal and child health uh, situation of my country, uh, and thank you again, participants, for for attending this uh, global health speaker series, uh, and have a good day. <laughs> Okay, yes, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, there will, this event was recorded and it will be available on the Global Health Events website page in, in a few days or about a week. Um, so if you'd like to review the recording, you can watch it there. Um, but again, thank you again for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, thank you.